The cost of living crisis is the biggest risk to the globe over the next two years. That's according to the latest survey by the World Economic Forum. Perhaps for many consumers, the report's findings come as no surprise. Prices for everything keep rising. Russia's invasion of agricultural powerhouse Ukraine caused food and energy costs to skyrocket. Welcome to the What Matters Today podcast from the Geneva Graduate Institute. I'm Dan Graham, head of communications at the Institute. In this podcast series, we ask members of our faculty to comment on key global issues. The cost of living increase is affecting many households globally. But how did we get here? We know that the war in Ukraine is fueling the cost of living crisis. However, what are the other causes? And what are some of the potential solutions to this crisis? Salary increases and price controls are often brought up as solutions, but are they effective? And lastly, how will this crisis impact the transition to greener energy? These are just some of the questions that we will examine in this episode of What Matters Today. My guest is Charles Viploch, Honorary Professor of International Economics and Faculty Associate for the Center for Finance and Development here at the Geneva Graduate Institute. Thank you very much, Professor Viploch, for joining us on this episode of What Matters Today. The first question I have for you is, what are the primary causes of the current cost of living increase and could anything have been done to avoid it? This is such an amazing surge in the increase that it's, there's not one reason. There are several, let me mention a few of them. First, coming out of the uh, COVID, the acute part of the COVID um, crisis, people had saved a lot of money and they went out spending mm. uh, when they right. were allowed to go to stores. So there was a big, big, big pressure. Second, Coming out of the acute part of the COVID crisis, firms, many firms had shut, many transport systems have slowed down or shut, and you just don't flip uh, the fingers and get it started. So it took time for firms to meet uh, the surge in spending. And that, of course, uh, put, started to put pressure on prices of what people buy in the store, but also on the prices of primary commodities that have to ship all around the globe. And that includes oil and gas, but also metals. So suddenly you had this sharp increase in prices of, of crucial right. uh, products. Then came the uh, the war in Ukraine and the uh, embargoes and all the, the cut down of, right. of, of, of acquisition of oil and prices. So that was the icing on the cake, if I can put it. But as people tend to think that's the main cause, it's, it just put more pressure on a process that was already well underway. Now your question is what could have done about it. I think we'll spend more time talking about that, but the, the people who are in charge of delivering price stability are central banks. And for uh, many reasons, most central banks were blindsided. They didn't see it coming. They should have. When it came, they said, well, it's going to be temporary, so there's no need for us to jump uh, and do something. And uh, when finally inflation rate, I mean, the rate at which uh, prices increase uh, started to get historically high given our last 20 years of history then they then they started to act they had lost uh, six months to a year uh, and they had to act forcefully more forcefully than they would have had to do if um, if they had come in earlier and prevented some of the num huge numbers that we have seen right well thank you for that so new research shows that the cost of living increase is affecting many households globally just not the richest 5%, apparently. So rising prices typically lead to higher interest rates, which can lead to a quote unquote, the rich keep getting richer while the poor keep getting poorer scenario. Is there any way to reverse this trend? Okay, let me first qualify uh, your description of what research says. Prices increase for everybody. Now it turns out if you're very rich, uh, you spend a tiny part of your income on, on spending right. and, and the rest you save. So you can take a reasonably sharp increases in the cost of living. Uh, in, 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 you know, you can take them in and don't really feel it. If, if you are poor, you spend 100% or more yes. of your income. So you, you're immediately hit. So everybody is hit 
in some way. Now, you asked what can be done about it. Okay, so here I have to, to open a, a bracket. Sure. Inflation is a process whereby prices increase, which hurt people's cost of living. So employees ask for uh, wage increases, which increase the cost for firms to operate. So they increase prices, which calls for further right. uh, wages. Yeah. So this is the, called the inflation spiral. And th it means two things. First, you have to move in and try to stop this spi spiral from developing. Two, if the spiral is underway, uh, you have to break it. Uh, you have to break it somewhere. And that's pretty ugly because it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt firms. It's going to hurt people. Sadly, we haven't discovered any nice way of breaking the neck of inflation. So you mentioned wage increases, and this is where I want to go with the next question, because uh, in a November article in Atlantico, on the topic of cost of living increase, you were interviewed and you mentioned that now is not the time for salary increases. You also mentioned that price controls do not work as a mechanism against inflation. And I just like to see if you can elaborate on these points. Okay, so it's a perfect continuation of what I was saying. So you have this spiral which is developing and you have to stop it. So you have to try to moderate wage increases and moderate price increases. And to do that, you have to put pressure on those who increase prices and those who increase wages. Now, firms increase prices and the way to moderate their enthusiasm for doing so, you have to have them face a weak market. So that means slowing down growth and accepting the risk of recession. Now, employees want higher wages at all time, especially when the labor markets are tight. And the way to moderate their enthusiasm is to have labor market become soft and they start worrying more about keeping their jobs or finding jobs than about raising inflation. Right. So that's, that's, that's why fighting inflation is, as I said earlier, ugly. Now, on uh, moderating prices, so there is always a temptation to have price controls. So the government decrees that you shall not raise prices at all or not by more than X percent over right. the next period. Yeah. That doesn't work. This has been tried over and over again. Uh, there are famous cases in Argentina and Brazil and other countries. Uh, Europe uh, had it in Western Europe. We had these things in the 70s. And it doesn't work because of two things. First, firms label good A, they now call it good B. Uh, and it's a completely different good, of course, and there you cannot uh, control, so it's easy to evade. Second, if price controls really stick, then you have black market. Right. Yeah, if firms okay. cannot sell officially the stuff at the price that they think they can fetch, then, then you'll have a black market. Then, and black markets hurt more the poor than the rich, of course. Uh, so it doesn't work, and it's uh, highly unequal, unjust. Now, on wages, again, the, the way to do that is to have unemployment start growing and, and wage earners become worried. Now, when I wrote this article, it was November. It was, we already had the spiral on their way, but reasonably weak on the wage side. And my thinking was, and still is, the following. Prices have grown up, have increased, and they will not go back up. So this is a, a dent, a serious dent in the, in the, the cost of living of people and they will have to be compensated. The, the history is that they always end up being compensated. The only question is when. And if you can defer it, sort of slow down this part of the inflation spiral for six months a year, then you will not have a spiral. And then you can compensate them adequately and they will fight for that anyway. Uh, so my, my thinking was it's going to be much easier or much uh, less damning to have enough increase in unemployment to moderate wages than if, if, if we can achieve wage moderation. And, and we have seen wage moderation. Uh, that, that, that we, we also see the rise of social pressure in many countries. But there is some sense uh, that people understood that these are special times, difficult time, and maybe the first urgency is not to raise wages. If we can do that, 
uh, if they are patient enough, then the fight against inflation is going to be easier. There will be less need for uh, rising unemployment. There will be less need for what is called a hard landing, which is a recession. And things will go faster and smoother and everybody will benefit from that. So that was my, my, <laughs> my thinking. That's a very good Wishful answer. thinking. <laughs> And just talking about uh, the word benefit in the sense, because the, the final question I have is potentially hinting at, is there a benefit in all of this? Because um, the current cost of living crisis has created kind of a new vocabulary, apparently, which with terms such as climate flation, fossil flation and greenflation, uh, given the significant increase in the cost of fossil fuels, can this current situation help accelerate the, the transition to greener energy, which could be a benefit? Right, so this could be the silver lining of uh, of the miserable years we we have had. Uh, it could or it could not, but it seems to be going in that direction. People had been already familiar with the climate change problem, but uh, a huge majority of people dislike the idea of a carbon tax, which is the magic wand. If we have that, then everything will be solved if it's done the right way, of course. Now... What the, what the energy crisis and the commodity price crisis has done, food price crisis has done, is to do a stupid uh, carbon tax at a time when people were getting really worried about uh, the, the climate change. So in many ways, people accepted the idea they would have to change their patterns of, uh, of consum- consuming, living. And the price increases that we had, the sharp price increases, sort of brought the message home that uh, now is the time to do it. Because before people were saying, I'll do that next year. Now when prices go up, and that's the logic of a carbon tax, people understand it's now it's going to be done. Now, is, the, is it done? Uh, are, are we there? Not sure, because climate change is a decade-long undertaking. And the question is, how long will the current situation where people try to save on uh, carbon goods because they are expensive uh, right now, how long will they keep doing at it? And the answer is not in. Now, let me mention things that are doing, going badly in terms of how policies, governments uh, have responded. In many countries, governments have sought to minimize the impact of these price increases on on people. And they have done things like cutting taxes on goods, uh, subsidizing people, trying to make things as little painful as possible. Now, if you make things not painful, then people will not react. And there's this famous example of Spain and Portugal that cut that prevented essentially the prices of gas and electricity and and, and all that from going up after they started to go up. So we had seen the the beginning of a reduction in uh, carbon consumption. And uh, once the governments protected the people, it went back up. Uh, And that's very, very silly. What is also silly in many countries, uh, governments have not targeted the needy people and not the rich that you were mentioning earlier who don't care. They gave uh, subsidies to everybody. So, for example, by reducing the price of gas at the gas station, uh, everybody. So uh, th- that's very costly and unnecessary. And these are the kind of mistakes uh, that, that have been done. Now, governments will have to stop doing these things because it's very costly, but it's going to be difficult and they may try to find ways to not do it too much because they want to be reelected. In which case, this uh, extraordinary opportunity to have a real go at, uh, at the cl- climate change will be, will be missed. So we don't know the end of the story. We never know anyway the, the, the end of history. Great. Well, thank you very much. That was very interesting. And thank you very much for joining us on this podcast episode. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. That was Honorary Professor Charles V. Ploche discussing the current cost of living crisis. This podcast series is produced by the Geneva Graduate Institute Communications team. For more information about the Institute, please visit our website at graduateinstitute.ch. I'm Dan Graham. Thanks for listening.